Hi, I'm Lauren Nelkin, and I'm excited to share a new jewelry design I have with you. If you've watched any of my last few videos, you've probably already seen Mingle. Mingle is a super simple cuff made with pre-strung beads that can be either knit or crocheted. I think it's really important for you to know that this is a companion video to the pattern and kit. So you will need those to understand what's happening in this pattern. This is just to like go over little tips and tricks with you. If you don't follow me and you want to hear about new designs and kits coming down the pike, I think it's a good idea if you want to sign up for my YouTube channel or my mailing list. Links to those are below along with links for the pattern and kit. Let me show you what's in the kit really quick quickly. Mingle comes with just a few things in it. It's very simple. It comes with some mercerized Pima cotton, and this is enough to make either the knit or crochet version. It comes with a bag of size eight Japanese seed beads, and in your bag is also a clasp. So you'll find that clasp inside your bag. And it also comes with a dental floss threader that you will use for stringing on your beads. It also comes with a redeem code for you to download your pattern. So the first thing that I wanna teach you is how to pre-string those beads onto your yarn and a decision that you'll need to make. Okay, it's time to pre-string those beads onto your yarn with your dental floss threader. The first thing you need to do is decide if you want to string your beads on in pattern or in order. And I have a knit cuff right here that has the beads strung on in pattern. And you can see that they are lining up from row to row in a different color. And then this crochet cuff has the beads strung on randomly. So I basically just like went for it and got my beads onto my yarn. Just like this yarn here, I'm stringing the beads on randomly. I think both are beautiful and it's up to you which you wanna choose. The directions for both are in the pattern. For those of you who've never strung beads onto yarn, I want to show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna move these out of the way and then I'm gonna take my dental floss threader and I'm gonna put my yarn through the dental floss threader, giving myself a tail right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead, and I like to just take some beads and put them into the palm of my hand. I think that's a little easier. And then you hold your dental floss threader down at the tip, and you pick up some beads and put them onto your threader and then slide those beads down and onto your yarn. Basically what you're doing with this step is preloading your yarn with beads. So as you get your beads onto your yarn, you're going to want to slide them down your yarn a bit because particularly for the crochet cuff, you're gonna work a few rows of crochet before you even get to working with those beads. So the next thing I wanna show you is tips for working the knit version, and then I'll show you tips for working the crochet version. Okay, if you're working the knit version of the cuff, the first thing that you're going to do is integrate your clasp into your cast on. This uses a long tail cast on. If you're not familiar with this cast on, I suggest looking up some other videos or checking in some of your knitting books. I'm not gonna go in depth about how to do the cast on, but you could certainly watch me do it a few times if you need a little bit of a refresher. So the first thing that I like to do is just put my yarn over my needle and the pattern has you casting on two stitches and that actually counts as your first stitch. And now what I'm going to do is put one more stitch onto my needle, and now I have two stitches on. And then what the pattern tells you to do is you've already pre-strung your clasp. I'm gonna slide that clasp up so that it is touching the needle. And then I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to thread it through. And I'm having a hard time, so I actually think what's great to do for that is if you take your tail and put it through your dental floss threader, you can use your dental floss threader 
to just slide that tail through so that now you have your working yarn and your tail going through the clasp and you're gonna cast on two more stitches. So now you've got four stitches on your needle and you're ready to follow the pattern as written. And the next thing that I wanna show you for the knit cuff is how to incorporate those beads. So I'm just gonna reach over here. I've got, this is like a cooking show where I've got like the cake ready to come out of the oven. There's like seven cakes lined up ready to go. So I am already into the body of a cuff right here and I'm on a right side row. So the first thing that I'm going to do is slip one purl wise with yarn in front and then I'm going to bring my yarn to the back of my work and I'm going to knit one and now I'm going to go down my yarn and I'm going to grab three beads and slide those beads all the way up so that they're touching the right hand needle and then I'm going to knit the next stitch and then slip the last stitch purlwise with yarn in front. And you can see those beads sitting right in between. I'm gonna do a wrong side row for you guys too, so you can see that as well. I am going to knit the first stitch. I am going to purl the second stitch. And now I'm gonna go down my yarn and I'm gonna grab three beads, slide them up. And now I'm gonna purl the next stitch and knit the last stitch. Not hard, right? Pretty easy working with pre-strung beads in this kind of stitch. I just think it's really fun to see done on the needles instead of just written out in a pattern. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is how incredibly easy it is to work with beads in a crochet stitch. When I went to design this, I forgot how much I love to crochet. Almost every summer I end up doing a crochet project. This I worked on in the like late winter, early spring, and I'm ready to do another crochet project after this. I'm not done at all. It is really easy to incorporate beads into crochet. I have one other design called Crucero that uses beads in crochet on the edging, and I'm kind of itching to do something like that again. This kind of got my, my crochet juices flowing, if you will. So I am on a beading row right here with my mingle, and I am going to, I'm ready to work the next stitch. And the first thing that you do is go down your yarn and grab three beads and slide them up so they're touching your hook. And now I'm gonna go into this next stitch and work a single crochet. That is how easy it is. Let's do that a few more times. So I'm gonna go down my work. I'm gonna grab three beads. You'll be grabbing as many beads as the pattern tells you for that stitch. And now I'm gonna go in and work that through. So I'm gonna come down, grab some beads, slide it up, work it through. And you just continue on like that. The biggest thing with the crochet cuff that you probably noticed is you are working a wrong side row and your beads are showing up on the right side row of your cuff. You'll see with the crochet cuff, I'm wearing one right here, talk about product placement right there. I am wearing one and you'll see in the crochet that there are two strands of beads lining up next to each other. I really love how these bracelets stack together. I chose a bunch of different colors to do the kits in. I kind of couldn't stop. I was like, well, what if I use the gray with this bead? Or what if I do purple over here? Ooh, look at this lime green bead. I wanna use that in a kit. I had a really good time putting them together for you. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. I have a great Facebook group, a Ravelry group. I check comments on YouTube. So anywhere that you wanna ask questions, I am happy to support you in knitting and crocheting your mingles. Thank you so much, everybody. Let's mingle together.